My name is Warren and I have a problem. I am a huge, huge fan of dungeons. Hey guys, for the past few weeks I've been spending quite a lot of time with the Dungeons and Lasers modular dungeon kit. And Dungeons and Lasers 2 is launching on Kickstarter, so I wanted to have a play with this in its kind of purest form uh, to really kind of give some feedback on, on what I think about it. So I set myself a challenge of a dungeon in a day. I give myself one day to clip apart, paint, and put together uh, a dungeon while keeping it completely modular. I have other projects in the works with this, including a dungeon display, um, uh, which you can catch on our channel, and I have one other secret project that I'm hoping to fire up with our John in here very soon, but I will keep you posted on that. So this is my end result. This is my dungeon in a day. Um, it's entirely mod modular, so every single piece has been kept uh, completely separate, um, rather than breaking it, uh, gluing it into kind of pre-built modular dungeon rooms, which is one way to go on dungeons. I thought to myself, for this kit, let's run it in its purest form, just to see what it's like to clip together basically a random dungeon from scratch. So I've set up a little bit of a dungeon here. This is our party of elven heroes um, uh, that are uh, entering in to the dungeon. And as is always uh, customary in a dungeon, they have a left and right choice uh, to make. They can go towards the kind of a more dwarven mine where they're going to pass a chest of gold very early in, the, uh, in their adventure, but they're going to meet a crazy slayer with his dangly bits hanging out who's going to come and cut them to pieces. Um, these wooden pieces are the new uh, Dungeons and Lasers components. I was very fortunate to get um, three or four sprues of it just to try out. And one of the key differences this time is this new 25 millimeter wall. Um, as you'll know, whenever you're playing with miniatures, if you have tall walls on either side, it can get a little bit tricky to um, place minis, uh, etc. But with this new 25 millimeter wall, you can obviously go lower on both sides, or as I like to do, I like to have like a back kind of feature wall and then use the lower wall uh, to the front. And it just makes accessibility of the dungeon so, so much easier. So much easier. That dwarf is going to come down and kick his butt. Okay, so they could go that direction. We're getting to see the beautiful new kind of um, wooden... This is almost like a mine kind of texture on this. During the Kickstarter, there is a number of different designs uh, that are going to be available. Uh, I've had a look through them, and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on some of them. Over, They could go this way into the more traditional dungeon set. So you can see your more traditional dungeon floor as opposed to this kind of more organic looking floor um, that's in the, the new set, the demo piece that I got. This is uh, from Dungeons and Lasers 1 um, through the doors. Here they're going to meet some chaotic warriors who are also on the hunt for the dwarven treasure that lies within this dungeon. And use of a little bit of the technical paints from Games Workshop, you can very quickly do your portals where, if you manage to get through it, will take you into the dwarven treasure room where they're about to unleash an organ cannon upon you. Nasty. Absolutely nasty. The stuff is made out of hard plastic, so it comes on a sprue. Um, I have been delighted with the material. It's robust, um, yet still very, very easy to work with. You know, in terms of the 25mm walls, 
I'm so impressed by the 25 mil walls. I've even been making my own because the material is uh, so workable that the plastic will just cut very nice with a razor saw. So a razor saw down that will cut uh, one of the existing walls down into a 25 mil wall uh, should, you, should you want to have a go at that. But this new designs that they're coming out with the, with the, the actual already pre-sculpted 25 mil walls, it's gonna save a, a lot of time and just make your dungeons that bit more workable. They also have a bunch of accessories. So whenever you're actually creating a dungeon, you still have a bunch of additional traps and pillars and stairs and chests and everything else that you can clip out, paint up and put into your dungeon just to give you lots of narrative. Let's talk a little bit about how it goes together because that's the genius to this. It really is um, nice and easy to work with. So let me move our Chaos Warriors out of the way. So as I can flip this over and show you how this works. So let me just take this apart. So this um, is your, your kind of typical dungeon room. But underneath, we can start to get a sense of how it is actually all held together. It's built in squares, so if I gradually take this apart, you'll start to see just how this all goes together. And more importantly, for a modular dungeon, just how easy it is to actually pack it away. The storage for this kind of dungeon is a lot, lot better um, than some of the alternatives that are out there. So if you have storage kind of limitations, this is the way to go because it's light. I have dungeons that are uh, resin cast and plaster cast that weigh a ton and are actually quite difficult to store because uh, you can't just chuck them all in a box together because they will chip and break uh, one another uh, in the box and the box itself can weigh a lot. The, the fact that it all flat packs down just makes it so storable. Um, I'm, I'm in two minds personally. I kind of like having pre-existing rooms with some of the narrative and things built in, but I kind of forced myself out of that habit for this project just to get a feel for what it would be like just to have the individual walls and uh, floors, primarily because uh, like a lot of DMs, we are quite time constrained. Um, so uh, I wondered, was it going to just take a very long time to actually put a, a dungeon together? But it goes together so quickly. Um, this little mock-up dungeon that I did here took about 15 minutes. And that 15 minutes included taking it apart again and readjusting it as the narrative kind of came to mind. And that was kind of nice because I was able to adjust the dungeon because sometimes when you're kind of laying out a dungeon, you get a really good idea in the middle and you want to go back to the start and make a slight adjustment so that it better reflects the story that's going to be told as you get to the middle. And that's exactly what happened during that 15 minutes or so as I was laying this out. Um, I was able to go back and readjust and, and make changes. So I'm not 100% sure at this stage, but I have really opened up to the idea of just keeping them as individual components that I can then just put together in any fashion that I want because I have seen just how quickly um, it all goes together. And the fact that I have no fear whatsoever of actually taking it apart. You know, the, the plastic is so robust. Um, I, I'm not on tender hooks every time I try to actually uh, remove a piece. Obviously my minis could take a bit of a beating, but the, the actual dungeon components themselves um, are very robust. They take the paint lovely, and I've been, I'm rather impressed 
I am rather, rather impressed. And the fact that I was able to set myself a challenge of a dungeon from sprue to complete in one day, and I was able to do it, bearing in mind, I'm about the world's worst painter, I'm not a great hobbyist, I have no time, I have no patience, so I needed to find fast, easy ways of making it work. And in the second part of this video, I'm going to retreat back to my workshop where I'm going to have a sit and talk with you and explain the steps that I went through to be able to complete a dungeon in one day. Now, I have my gorgeous minis in the dungeon, but the guys over at Archon, when they came up with the idea for Dungeons and Lasers number two, um, decided they were going to go a step further. And they have created seven dragons as well, of which uh, I got a hold of one of them. This is Durkar, um, who I was able to build. Let me let me show you. So this is Durkar, the Sovereign Serpent. Let me just use a razor saw for something it was never intended to do. Okay. Now, this is a prototype version. There's um, some little changes uh, that they're making to it. I'll be honest, as I was building it, they, they had a little sheet in here that described some of the changes uh, that they're making. Um, however, I didn't have much issue with the with the uh, with the components anyway. Um, so things like uh, the tail will have an additional connector part. Both the tongue and the flame are interchangeable, and one of the shoulder pads will be adjusted for a better fit. I didn't have any issues with it anyway. It, it went together. It went together lovely for me. Um, but here it is in its uh, pieces. I have it tacked to a base here because I'm going to scenic base this one, and I'm going for a chromatic dragon uh, kind of effect on this one. So I have tried one of those. Uh, New Games Workshop primers. I think is it Rune Lord Brass. Um, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll have a look at that because I, I want to make him chromatic, one of the metallic uh, kind of dragons. Because yeah, if you're going to have a dun uh, a dragon down a dungeon, I think a, a metallic kind of dragon would be would be kind of good because he's probably been down there eating all of the minerals and things that are that are down there. The details are lovely, I will say. You know, it's, um, there's gorgeous folds and layering uh, in the actual wings. So that will take paint and washes really, really nice. Um, the actual dragon itself, every scale um, is just waiting for a little bit of a wash. So if, like me, you don't consider yourself much of a painter, I don't think we have too much to fear from this because this dragon has been sculpted in a way that with the appropriate use of contrast paints and washes, this thing's going to kind of paint itself in many ways. Um, uh, so I'm quite excited about getting some paint uh, down on it. And that's exactly what I found with the dungeon pieces as well. They've been designed and sculpted and um, injection molded in such a way that the, there's lovely depth to the recesses. And that just makes things like zenith priming, uh, dry brushing washes, just so much easier to work with uh, on the likes of this because the details are accentuated. Uh, and it allowed me to very quickly put together a dungeon in a kind of, I'll admit, it's a classic kind of dungeon color scheme that I went for, um, just because I'm I'm one of those 70s kids that grew up through Hero Quest, so I have a kind of a classic dungeon passion that I love to see played out on the tabletop. Anyway, the Kickstarter is on now, I believe, so um, head on over, check it out. Um, I'm going to sit down now and uh, actually talk you through how it was possible to create a dungeon in a day. Okay, so 
Um, for those of you that might be interested in the how um, uh, I approached a, a dungeon in a day, I'm going to take a going to take a few minutes now to um, just to talk you through the process and some of the things that I tried, some of the things that I learned. Now, you might think, you know, a dungeon in a day, I'm just slap dashing um uh, the this project but that that's that's not the case um um uh, i'm building i i decided to do something quite special with this so this is going to be a a gift for my little girl um as a uh, her first modular dungeon um of her own that, that that she can um work out rpgs or, or or whatever kind of adventures that she wishes to to take me and the other boys in the family um on so, although I've set myself a very specific uh, time scale, um, it's not because I'm putting any less love uh, into the project. In fact, I've, I've something to show you here. Actually, um, I'm planning to actually once it, uh, you put it into a box, just like this, so that it can sit on a reshelf and be a self-contained uh, kind of um, uh, dungeon kit for her. So. Um, yeah, uh, I'm thinking about getting just probably this exact one. I'm 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 still having a wee look around to see what uh, what other options I have, but um, it's almost like a little presentation case because when it comes to um, role playing and dungeons and stuff like that, there I'm all about the props and stuff as well, man. You know, so uh, I just want to do something re really nice for. However, that doesn't change the fact that as an individual, I have certain limitations. Time definitely being one of them. Attention span. You know, like many of us, I have projects that um, if it goes on too long, um, it'll just sit. And I don't like my projects to sit, especially as I've reached middle age and I've started to get older. These days, I like to get stuff done. So I'm very willing to sacrifice um, convoluted steps. Yeah, they might make a dungeon um, more beautiful, but they're not going to make it twice as beautiful. And that's that's my key. I would rather have something complete as something lovely, but only half complete. Okay, so constraints. Uh, I, I set myself constraints. So for this project... Um, there was a few things that I decided that I was going to do. First was I was going to keep it as all of the individual components. My approach to dungeon building is I tend to build uh, individual rooms, and then you set down the rooms. And that's fine. You can do some really nice stuff. You know, you, well, Once you build the rooms, you can make sure that the floors are blended to the walls and that you can add... Uh, shading and uh, extra shadows and stuff like that. All fairly quick stuff to do, you know, using a, a little bit of airbrushing at the end. Um, however, I decided not to do that for this project. A, it allowed me to put uh, Dungeons and Lasers to the test because this is as modular as you get. Um, having the individual tiles and the individual walls um, you don't get any more modular than this in terms of, uh, of dungeons. Um, many of us will have seen uh, this approach in uh, the 3D printing world. And I love 3D printing. I think 3D printing is great. However, had I set out to do this project in a day with 3D printing, um, it, would take a, it would have taken weeks because of the, the length of time to actually uh, print out each individual tile and wall and uh, and everything else. So one of the benefits of having it as a plastic kit is uh, it's a relatively inexpensive way of getting a lot of mass in a very, very workable, safe material. Okay? It's very workable. It's very safe. It takes the paint well. It's something we're all used to. Okay? So, yeah. Um there will be trade-offs potentially in the odd bit of detail and stuff here, but nothing that anybody is ever really going to notice. So I opted not to build the rooms and to go uh, a route that instinctively I normally wouldn't go, and that is to keep it entirely modular um, just to see how it goes. Now, that led me to some things that I would have to accept. I would have to accept that I wouldn't be doing 
um, much in the way of shading and shadows uh, at this stage. But that's fine. That's fine. You know, I'm 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 curious uh, to have seen what the end result is like and what the flexibility of having it uh, in its modular components um, would do in terms of building it and laying it out. Now, I'm only just back from the studio where I was showing you um, uh, that dungeon. And, and like I said, that the, the dungeon that I've just shown you there took about 15 minutes um, to, to, to put together, maybe 20 minutes, okay? However, it only took about five minutes to break it apart. And it broke apart and just went back into a box. And, and, I, and I was saying to, to John, who had filmed it with me, man, this comes together and goes goes apart a lot quicker than I expected, you know, and it's that lego kind of a, a, a thing. And this is one of the things that from the Kickstarter, um, I'm hoping that the Archon guys gradually explore, if not in this Kickstarter, but in future Kickstarters, I want them to explore curves and curved walls and, uh, and things like that. Because if we are going this route of having it entirely modular, it would be interesting to see just what other shapes and things that, that, that those engineers can kind of uh, come up with. Because I'm sure that they can. Right. So a dungeon in a day. How do you tackle it? Well, the first things first, I rocked into the studio um, at about 6 a.m. I thought if I'm going to do a dungeon in a day, I'm going to get a nice early start. So 6 a.m., um, rock to the studio, let's see, and I started clipping. So um, I basically got all the sprues, um, um, that I, some sprues, leftover sprues from the dungeon display project that I'm working on, and the sample sprues that Archon very kindly sent me to, to check out these new 25 mil walls. The, the stuff clips great. Make sure you get an, a good pair of clippers with um, a flat back. Um, that way it, do, it, it it speeds things up. It's a, a little bit less cleaning to do. You could go in and clean these as much as you want. I tend not to uh, on, on something like a dungeon because, you know, the, the guys have been smart enough to put the 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 injection points and the, the, the actual little bits where the... the the piece meets the sprue into places where it'll rarely be seen. You know, most of it's on the underside. There's some on the top surface, but again, it just adds a little bit of extra roughness and stuff. And as you'll see, as I've painted over it, it's grand. You get yourself a decent pair of clippers, though. That makes all the difference. If you get clippers that aren't flat-backed and don't slice through the, the sprue uh, effectively, then you're always going to be left with a nub, and then you'll have to go in and kind of shave that off again it's not a big deal but heck it's a time saver i approach this from the perspective of what do i build i have no idea so do you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to lift a bunch of sprues and i'm going to clip for 60 minutes and that's what i did i went in and i just clipped for 60 minutes because i said to myself look there's no point in me trying to plan out um a dungeon when the whole purpose of this is to create a modular dungeon that that can do all sorts of uh, stuff. So I just uh, I just set myself a time limit of 60 minutes of clipping. And I went in and I just uh, clipped out a pile of stuff randomly. Uh, I, I thought I'll clip out a good few more floors than walls. That way I can increase floor space because sometimes it's kind of nice to have bigger rooms. Um, uh, having now done it, I probably will go back in and add some more walls and things uh, to the project, but I'm going to wait till uh, Dungeons and Lasers Two um, delivers um, because uh, I, I love these 25 mil walls. And in that Dungeons and Lasers Kickstarter, they have some gorgeous Gothic stuff in there as well. So I'm probably just going to wait now until uh, until that Kickstarter uh, delivers. There's the the clippers that I'm using, me old trusty boys that with the flat back, right. I then got to priming. Started with the floors, had a can of Chaos Black. Right. I, to save time here, I'm going to work wonders with spray cans. Okay? And when you're working wonders with spray cans, it pays to get 
better. Well, it pays to get particular kinds of paint, okay? In this case, Games Workshop do some very, very nice primers. And these are primers that go down thin and don't dry too much on the way from the spray can to the actual object that you're priming. It stays wet and it goes down in a very nice, fine layer. Um, some spray cans that you get whenever you're dusting from a distance, the particles of the paint dry bef before they end up reaching the target and you get this very powdery kind of effect. I'm trying to avoid that. So um, uh, there were some very specific spray paints that I picked. Chaos Black is a beautiful black primer and it goes down very, very smooth. So I just blasted the floor with Chaos Black. And as you can see, it just goes down lovely. And that's given me my darkest recesses um, uh, uh, in the actual floors. I then took Grey Sear. Now, Grey Sear is a paint that is a part of... It was introduced with Contrast. It's another incredible primer. Really, really interesting primer. And I dusted the, along the tops with Grey Sear, okay? Let me see if I've... Uh, uh, I've uh, you, you, this is the kind of result you get. Let me see if I can find a picture of me doing it. There. The trick here is to dust horizontally across the top of uh, uh, of the pieces. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a layer of the primer to um, just to sit on the uppermost uh, parts of the model. So by dusting across, um, it layers itself onto the uppermost parts and doesn't uh, make its way down into the crevices where I want to try and keep the shading. Okay, doing it that way, I have just saved myself a ton of dry brushing and I have completed all of those floors in about five to ten minutes. That's the difference here. Dry brushing is lovely, but I have a couple of issues with dry brushing. One, I have a wrist issue at the moment. Um, I, I'm as a, you know, many of us are, are getting on in years, so the, the prospect of uh, dry brushing. A um, hundred tiles didn't particularly appeal to me from the perspective of um, you know of, of of the pain that I might might go through, and secondly, I'm not a great painter, and I know that I will struggle regardless of what I do with um, uh, uh, keeping the dry brush matching across the entire project. So I thought, look, this is a speed thing. 24 hours, well, less than 24 hours, one day, one dungeon, this is the this is the way to do it. I then took the the walls. Now I wanted to prime the walls standing upright. I wanted them upright during this process um, because uh, to zenith the walls, so zenith is whenever you're adding that kind of shading and lighting effect. Um, uh, using the spray cans, it, it everything will work so much easier for me if I have them standing upright. So I basically went into the same bit of cardboard that I had been using to uh, prime on and used that little Citadel scraper, another fantastic tool for getting rid, rid of little bits and pieces of excess plastic. And I popped holes in and then just plugged in the, the dungeon walls so that they would all be standing upright. I think that's a little bit of leftover vapor from super glue you're seeing there. In this instance, I thought I'm going to try something different. I'm just curious to see how it might work. So I uh, went in with a nice army painter uh, uniform gray to give it all a really good prime. And I just went in and uniform gray is a superb primer. Went in, put it down uh, a nice good layer across the, the entire um, set of, uh, of items that were on there. Um, and as you can see, the coverage is lovely. Uh, you know, it goes down and it gives it a really nice, good coat. I then went in with um, uh, this product called Dirty Down. Now, you can find this on store.ontabletop.com. 
Um, this used to go under the 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 banner of Model Mates. Now it's a product that's sold into um, the special effects industry, and basically what it does is it just it dirty stuff. It shades it, it down, and I used grey um, across all of it. And then went into the ones that had the kind of the more stone and the woodeny effect from the, the new samples that I got through and hit them with a little bit of a blast of the mid brown. Um, just to give it a, a little bit of a little bit of extra dirt here and there. So um, that was you know a fairly um, liberal spraying um, of the gray because you know the it's another kind of like a wash kind of a thing but uh, but it, it's it, it it evaporates and dries very quickly so I keep it fairly liberal so that it gets a chance to run down um into the the the, the crevices and uh, the likes of the model so um that you can see uh, starts to give us uh, some of the the shading that we're after and there are the, the two bad boys that I decided to use, the mid-brown and the grey. There are a range of other um, products out there. that like There's moulds and, and everything else. They are very good. They are very good. We've used them a lot over the years. I then added the, the removed... I added the dirty down to the floors, and then one trick that you can do is I then used a damp cloth with a little bit of Dirty Down sprayed into it, because Dirty Down reactivates Dirty Down, okay? And I was able to then wipe it off. Oh, this one's upside down, but you can see you can see the difference here. So the, the topmost one there is the one that I have wiped off the excess with the cloth. So the lower one there is being hit with the Dirty Down brown, and then I've went in, reactivated it slightly, and just wiped off the the top layer, and it gives you a very quick um, shading uh, effect. I hope there's not going to be a pile of these all upside down. Um, in this, I'm doing the same to the walls. So I'm uh, basically going into the walls with the the damp cloth with a little bit of dirty down on it to help reactivate the dirty down that's on it. And I'm just going in and uh, wiping off uh, the excess to try and leave um, uh, leave it in the, the recesses um, of the models. Again, this took about 10 minutes. Maybe, yeah, about 10 minutes to do all of this. It is such a fast process. It really is. Um, that leaves it um, all sitting ready for the final step where I go in and I give it one last uh, dusting of um, uh, the grey sear. Again, so on the floors, horizontal, that way, and then on the walls coming in from a very high angle, top down, and from a distance. Don't go in too close. You need it from a distance, and that's why we're using grey sear, because grey sear is another one of these beautiful primers that doesn't dry too quickly and gives you a really nice soft flat surface not a powdery surface which you can get from uh, other primers trying to do the same effect and there you see um, the uh, end result of that uh, kind of fast shading process then I retired to my paint desk gathered the whole lot up uh, onto um, uh, into a box went home had my lunch, relaxed, and then went out to the shed um, to, at my paint desk and just started painting. And I thought, right, speed is of the essence here. Contrast paints to the rescue. So I used a combination of contrast paints. I wanted a more kind of um, uh, old-school, cartoony kind of a look on this one. So um, I just went for a Gore Guntra fur uh, contrast paint and uh, just painted it raw just poured a little bit onto the wet palette um i i didn't cut it with medium or or anything i just used it as it is and uh, just worked that into the wood um when i was done with that i picked out some of the nails with the black templar contrast and that was about it the final step was uh, making a 50 50 wash of null oil 
and uh, one of the mediums, uh, this, in this case just a lamium uh, medium, just to cut the null oil. And it's a 50-50 mix that I like to make, and then I just whipped it on with a big brush and then just let it dry. Um, in fact, there you can see uh, I used some of the, the actual connector pieces just to create a little drying station. So once I had whipped on the null oil, I just kind of plugged it in and just let it dry and let the null oil just run into its recesses. It's a little bit scrappy here and there, but you know what? I'm, I'm very pleased with the end result. I have no issue with it, and it is super fast to do. All in all, the painting took me about three hours or so. Yeah, but so uh, to get to the stage of everything that I'd done in the studio took about two, two and a half hours. Um, you know, and I had cups of tea and a drink and, and stuff like that as well. So I was going at a good old clip, but I wasn't, uh, uh, I wasn't, it wasn't backbreaking work, I've got to say. The painting was a little bit of a slog because there is a lot of wood in the, those new sprues. Um, but um, I, I persevered, uh, I got through it, and I really enjoyed the last step of the Nuln Oil because it's nice to just coat the whole thing and then it gets that comic booky kind of pen line, uh, outline uh, kind of effect. And it all just, I like it. I like it. I think it's, it's kind of nice. I also had a play with um, uh, some of the, the new technical uh, colors. There's a Tesseract Glow um, is the new kind of Necron-y color from uh, Games Workshop. And uh, one of my old favorites, uh, Nikola Oxide. Um, so those runes up above that nice dwarven wooden door, um, I'd originally done in the Nilhach Oxide, um, and the portal, that kind of green shimmery portal, was two coats of the, the Tesseract Gloss, or Tesseract Glow. I then decided I was going to put Tesseract Glow over the top of the uh, Nilhach Oxide, Primarily because I thought I'm going to reduce the color palette a little bit here because um, I'm not a massive fan of, of, of weird, wonderful colors everywhere. I like to build up a color palette slowly. And uh, in a dungeon, I thought to myself, Let, let's, let's just focus the color palette. We'll not go too mad. So there'll be browns, there'll be golds, there'll be grays, and there'll be greens. And, and that will help tie everything uh, uh, together and I can gradually introduce new colors um, over time um, I really like the the tesseract glow it's not bad um, I think in future I would put it over a white gloss though um, I have a few experiments that I would like to to do with that um, uh, as I proceed I then whipped out another old product now this one we don't stock I'm not sure if you can get any more I must reach out to the dude and say, recreate this, because it is one of my favorites. This is the Model Mate's rust effect, okay? This is a little pot of instantaneous rust. Um, and uh, all you do is just dab it on. You just uh, take it out and just dab it on, and then as it dries, it turns in to uh, an oxidized um, uh, effect. And it is super quick for just adding a very quick rush of rust um, uh, across it. And dungeons, dungeons love rust, so it's a great product to have to very quickly go in and add a little bit of a contrast uh, here and there and uh, uh, to a dungeon and say, look, rust is going to cover up a lot of, uh, a lot of the issues uh, that, I, that I have because I don't have an awful lot of time to go in and paint everything. This rust effect will do it. And you can layer the coverage of the rust effect so you can add more and more um, layers of it and build up the layers they used to do a number of different colors like a yellow rust and stuff and you could kind of layer it all it's a really nice product it's a really nice product uh, dries out very quickly um, and you need to clean the brush often um, between using it because it, it kind of clumps up but it is it is a fast interesting product and there we end up with it like i said this came together in about 15 minutes or so. Um, I went for some large rooms because I was just curious as, as to how they would go. Um, I think I will add some more walls and bits and pieces to it. I'm certainly going to add some of the accessories 
um, uh, to it. But uh, like I said, you know, uh, I may wait now until uh, Dungeons and Lasers Two uh, delivers because they have some options in there that are absolutely gorgeous. But uh, already, I'm I'm able to 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 see from my perspective anyway a nice narrative. You can uh, start to see the beginnings of the the you know the the, the portal um, at the back there. You know, hey, it's great looking stuff. It is great looking stuff. I, I you know, I'm, I really, I, I really do like it. And there's our crazy dude, and, and it goes together well. Now you can see there's still some little details that I can pull out here and there. I had been looking at these, these little candles and and the likes, and um, the great thing about a project like this, you know, I say a dungeon in a day. There's nothing stopping myself and uh, my little girl, Lynn, getting together at some point and uh, spending an afternoon um, pulling out uh, some of the additional details here and there. So a little bit of white into for the, the, the candle wax. You know, it, it, it can work uh, really well um, and give us an activity to, to spend some time on together. The tiles blend fairly well. I'm, I'm quite pleased with how the tiles go together. I have the little uh, circular parts to block out the holes, but I, I didn't include them in this part of the project because I just, again, I want to see how a modular dungeon actually works because it's more modular than I would normally ever go. And uh, once again, you can you can see the doors and all just pop. There, are, It's a great canvas. It is a really, really good canvas. And, you know, the, the, the minis just look so comfortable in there. You know, it, it just it just works. Um, I love the fact that they have uh, doors that are both closed and open. Um, I think that works uh, really well as well. And yeah, uh, I just I just like the end result of it. I think for a project that um, I put together in one day, so you would start at six a.m. in the morning. You and you're going to finish. I finished last night. What time did I finish last night? About half ten. About half ten. Um, oh, no, be about 11. About 11 o'clock. I forgot about the rust. The rust effect um, probably was about another 30 minutes or so, just applying rust uh, across uh, a number of the of the tiles. And then the rust effect was the last effect that I've put on. I have one more step that I would like to do. It's a 10-15 minute job, and that's to put a nice um, uh, uh, matte coat over the whole thing just to give it a, a nice layer of protection um uh i but i've held off on that step i i could have done it and i could have fitted it in uh, to the dungeon in a day but i've held off because i just want to double check if there's anything else that i want to to do to them um as a little follow-up uh project but yeah there there you have it uh, a, a dungeon in a day a dungeon that breaks down and goes into the, the smallest of boxes. A dungeon that's as flexible as you're likely to get. Um, it's not as pretty um, had a, a, as if I had made it as individual rooms. Um, but uh, individual rooms are very, very possible with this. And, you, you, you know, if it's pretty dungeons you're after, you know, tune in to my vlog, uh, my ongoing project of the dungeon display, because that's where I'm taking this exact stuff and trying to take it a few levels on this is where uh, i'm turning it into more of a diorama than than a physical um modular play set i have one more project in mind now it all depends on whether we can get the parts but that 25 mil wall it was crucial to unlocking this if we can get the parts okay myself and john are going to take on another secret one day build and that's recreating the hero quest board using the dungeons and lasers and to see just what can we make a really sexy hero quest board so we'll wait and see if we can get the bits and pieces to have a crack at that and if we can we will certainly uh, do a one day build and see just what one day can do to recreate um, a really nice hero quest uh, board and uh, how we would go about that. 
Okay, guys. Look, thank you for watching. Um, Dungeon and Lasers 2 is on Kickstarter. Um, if dungeons are your thing, um, I think it's definitely one uh, worth checking out. Okay, guys. Stay tuned. We'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.